Hello everyone. So today we're going to be learning about the Sophie Germain identity and how we can use that to solve some questions in algebra and number theory. So Sophie Germain was basically a French mathematician uh, and who who basically devised this factorization of polynomials back in the 18th century. So even after 200 years we keep on seeing uh, her work in in algebra especially. It's actually really interesting. It's a very elementary result and it's a good to know result because you never know when and where it might come. So yeah, let's just see how it's applied in certain problems. This is a problem number two from the Indian National Math Olympiad 2008, and in this video we're going to be learning the Sophie Germain identity, its statement, its proof, and all of that, of course. And after that, we're going to be solving different times using divisibility techniques. So obviously, if it's an INMO problem, it's any National Math Olympiad problem. Just knowing Sophie Germain identity is obviously not going to be enough because it's very elementary result in algebra. But having said that, when you combine that with certain other things, maybe like divisibility techniques, maybe a little bit about congruence model, maybe bashing model, introducing model, and certain things like that, then it potentially becomes a good problem, and that's what we're gonna see over here. After that, we have certain book sessions for National Math Olympiads, and at the end, a similar but challenging problem. This video is sponsored by Chinta dot com. Since two thousand and ten, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world. in mathematical olympiads physics olympiads computer science and informatics olympiads isi cmi entrances and research projects for school and college students okay so what have they given us so we need to find all triples p comma x comma y such that p raised power x is y raised power 4 plus 4 where p is a prime and x comma y are natural numbers Okay, that's great. But before we go, in, before we go, jump into that, maybe let's just discuss what the Sophie Germain identity is, right? The Sophie Germain identity, right? So this was created by French philosopher and mathematician Sophie Germain around two hundred years ago, and she basically gave us the factorization of x is per four plus y four times y is per four in the form of obviously two quadratic expressions, which we have to figure out. And this is actually quite easy to do because this thing reminds me of x square whole square plus two y square whole square. So effectively, effectively, whenever I see a square plus b square, if I just add two ab and subtract two ab, I can get a plus b whole square minus two ab. So basically, this is what I'm going to do here as well. So here I'll have a is equal to x square and b is equal to two y square. So if I just add two ab and subtract two ab. I will get something like this, right? Two times a times b, two y squared over here, minus two times a times b, and that's actually great because I can write x is per four plus four times y is per four as x squared whole squared plus two y squared whole squared plus two x y whole squared minus two x y whole squared. So this basically becomes x square plus two y square whole square minus two x y whole square. After this, it's just the difference of squares, which is a plus b times a minus b. So this becomes x square minus two x y plus two y square, and x square plus two x y plus two y square. And effectively, if I just plug in maybe y is equal to one over here. I'll get x is per four plus four is equal to x square minus two x plus two, and x square plus two x plus two. Effectively, that's what they had given us in the question as well. We had p is per x equal to y is per four plus four. So we had p is per x is equal to y is per four plus four. So basically, y is per four plus four can be written as let's replace x with y over here. We'll get y square minus two y plus two, and y square plus two y plus two. Basically, the first step of this problem was using the Sophie Germain identity. Now, let's say maybe you had not studied about this. Let's say you did not remember what it exactly was. What do you do in the exam? You just derive it, right? That's the beauty of maths. You can just derive it. So when I write this y is per four plus four, I can basically write it as y square whole square plus two square. Again, using the same idea, add two ab and subtract two ab. Right. This becomes y square whole square plus two square plus four y square minus two y whole square, which is obviously four y square. So you'll get y square plus two whole square minus two y whole square. 
So effectively y raised to the power 4 plus 4 becomes y square minus 2y plus 2 times y square plus 2y plus 2. So basically p raised to the power x becomes y square minus 2y plus 2 times y square plus 2y plus 2. And that's great because now I can just bifurcate this into two cases, two very distinct cases. Case one is that y square minus 2y plus 2 is some power of p and similarly y square plus 2y plus 2 is some other power of p. Right? And for a and b which are belong to natural numbers obviously because y is also a natural number just like x. But this is obviously one case. The other case is that the entire p raised for x goes to one of these quantities and the other quantity is obviously 1. So it's possible that y square minus 2y plus 2 is equal to p raised for x and the other thing is 1 or y square plus 2y plus 2 is 1 and the other thing is p raised for x. Basically in the second case we'll actually see that p raised for x the entire all powers of p effectively go to only one term. And here we kind of like seeing that it splits right so effectively p raised to the power a plus b is equal to p raised to the power x. So here we can essentially say that a plus b is equal to x. But in the second case, we'll see that one of these things will be zero. So either b will be zero or a will be zero. But here we're considering a comma b to be natural numbers. But okay, leaving that aside, that's just that's just kind of like uh, intuition. But leaving that aside, now that we've written this, we can actually see that p divides y square minus 2y plus 2. And similarly, P also divides y square plus 2y plus 2. So whenever P divides A and whenever P divides B, P will obviously divide A minus B. And we've discussed this plenty of times before. If 7 divides 56 and if 7 divides 42, 7 will obviously divide the difference of 56 minus 42, which is 14. And obviously 7 divides 14, 14 divided by 7 is 2. Let me just take out the difference between these two quantities, right? y square plus 2y plus 2 minus y square minus 2y plus 2 and if you actually compute this you'll get p divides 4y so therefore p divides 4 or p divides y let me just break this down into two subcases case a this is obviously within case one these are two subcases p divides 4 but since p is a prime p has to be 2 right as p is prime and this is stems from the fact that if x divides 4 then that implies that x can only and only be 1 2 or 4 Neither 1 is not a prime nor is 4. So the only prime in this set is 2. So therefore, P has to be equal to 2. And if I move on to case B, P will divide Y. So effectively, what did we have in the original question? P is for X is equal to Y is for 4 plus 4. Now, since P divides Y, P will obviously also divide P. So therefore, P will divide P is for X minus Y is for 4. This essentially comes to the fact that P divides P, so P divides P raised to the power X, obviously, and P divides Y, so P will obviously also divide Y raised to the power 4, and P will obviously divide the difference between them as well. Now, from this equation, what is P raised to the power X minus Y raised to the power 4? It is obviously 4, so therefore P divides 4, and therefore from here also we get P is equal to 2. So we are actually getting that P is equal to 2 from both cases, right? So from both cases, case A and case B, sub cases, I should say, we're getting P is equal to 2. So why not just plug this P is equal to 2 into the original equation, right? So I'll get 2 raised to the power X is equal to Y is power 4 plus 4. Now the right hand side is even, the left hand side has to be even. 4 is obviously even, therefore Y raised to the power 4 has to be even, therefore Y is even. So Y is even, so therefore I can write Y is equal to 2K for some natural number K, obviously. So this effectively becomes 16k raised to the power 4 plus 4 or in other words 2 raised to the power x is congruent to 4 mod 16. And this only and only holds, this only and only holds for x equals to 2. Why? Because if I plug in x equals to maybe 0, I'll get 2 raised to the power 0 which is 1. If I plug in x equals to 1, I'll get 2 which is 2 mod 16. If I get plug in x equals to 2, I'll get 4 which is 4 mod 16. If I plug in x equals to 3, I'll get 8 which is 8 mod 16. If I plug in x equals to 4, I'll get 16 which is 0 mod 16. If I plug in x equals to 5, I'll get 32 which is 0 mod 16. x equals to 6, I get 64 which is again 0 mod 16. So basically, 2 raised to the power x is congruent to 0 mod 16 for all x greater than equal to 4. So I only have to check x equals to 1, 2, 3 and x equals to 2 actually holds. 
So therefore, x equals to 2. So effectively, our equation that was p is for x equal to y is for 4 plus 4 has reduced down to the fact that p is equal to 2 and x equals to 2. So basically, y is for 4 plus 4 is equal to 2 squared 4. Therefore, y is equal to 0. Not possible as y belongs to natural numbers. That was given in the question. So basically, we have no solutions from this case. Right? No solutions here. Now we move on to case two. Now what was I saying in the case two, right? I was saying that the entire thing, so for example, we had p raised power x equal to y squared plus two plus two y, something like that, I guess. y squared minus two y plus two. And y squared plus two y plus two, right? We had this. So what I was saying in the first case is that, you know, this is p raised power a and this is p raised power b. So kind of like the power of the prime p gets split up now what we're going to analyze is that it does not get split up it gets it goes completely to one side right so therefore in this case to one of y square minus 2y plus 2 and y square plus 2y plus 2 is 1 and the other is p raised to the power x so maybe let's just split this up again into two subcases so case a Case A, you have y squared plus 2y plus 2 is equal to 1. And the other thing, y squared minus 2y plus 2 is equal to p is per x. So if y squared plus 2y plus 2 is equal to 1, that then effectively means y squared plus 2y plus 1 is equal to 0. Therefore, y plus 1 whole square is equal to 0. And y is equal to minus 1, which is obviously not true, as y needs to be natural number. Case B is y squared minus 2y plus 2 needs to be equal to 1. And y squared plus 2y plus 2 needs to be p is per x. So over here, solving it again, y square minus 2y plus 2 needs to be 1. If I just subtract 1 from both sides, I'll get this. Therefore, y minus 1 whole square is equal to 0. Therefore, y needs to be equal to 1. And when I plug this back into the original equation, I'll get p raised for x equal to y raised for 4 plus 4. In other words, p raised for x equal to 5. Therefore, p is equal to 5 and x equal to 1 will obviously be the only solution. Therefore, p is equal to 5, x equals to 1 and y is equal to 1. In other words, 5 comma 1 comma 1 is the only solution. So yeah, like you saw there, we actually use Sophie German identity to kind of simplify down the question. And once you broke it into two cases, then things actually became really simple, right? You didn't have to do a lot considering this is an in more problem. So yeah, really interesting applications of uh, Sophie German and certain divisibility techniques and uh, model arithmetic. So yeah, hope you learned something from that. Okay, so moving forward, we have certain book sessions for the National Math Olympiads, Elementary Number Theory by David Burton, Principles and Techniques in Combinatrix, Problem Solving Strategies by Arthur and Jell, Functional Equation by Venkat Achala, Problems in Plane Geometry by Sharikin, Elementary Number Theory by Siapinski, Graph Theory by Harari, and Combinatrix by Brualdi. Okay, so at the end, we have a similar but challenging problem, and I want you to find all triples, p, q, n, such that it satisfies the given equation n raised power 4 plus 4 is equal to pq. So the arrangement is kind of similar to what we have seen in this question. The configuration is basically literally almost the same. We have n raised power 4 plus 4, which should give you the idea of Sophie Germain identity. So yes, maybe try using Sophie Germain and if you're able to make any progress on it or if you're able to solve it, let me know in the comment section. And until then, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much and bye-bye. The programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics and they are personalized with one-on-one -on -one training, individual evaluation, and remedial sessions. The reason Chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by mathematicians and real Olympiads from leading universities in India, United States, and Europe. Some of our students come back to teach at Chinta from Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, MIT, UCLA, ISI, CMI, IITs, TIFR, and IISC. For more information, visit chinta.com.